mean, I think we're all aware that uh, KPMG International claims uh, in their statement that uh, they identified no evidence of illegal behavior or corruption on the part of KPMG partners or staff. Now, we simply do not believe that that statement is credible precisely because the, in the investigation was conducted uh, evidently by KPMG International and uh, they are therefore conflicted. That is why we asked for these hearings so that we could satisfy ourselves that the regulator is conducting uh, an investigation. So thank you for your report. My first question is, uh, in your statement you said uh, that you had interacted with KPMG uh, International and KPMG South Africa. Uh, and at some point, you had to revert back to them to remind them uh, to submit uh, documents or evidence timelessly. That suggests to me that KPMG South Africa are not cooperating or not sufficiently cooperating with your investigation. Is that a correct uh, inference uh, from your statement? So that's the first question. The second question uh, deals with the scope. Now, in your statement on the 30th of June 2017, where you uh, announced that uh, Erba would conduct an investigation, it appeared to me that the scope of that investigation was uh, limited to the whole question of the audit of uh, Linkway uh, trading, which was central to the so-called Dubai laundromat. But I want to be clear, does the scope of your investigation extend uh, to the controversy surrounding the forensic report uh, into the so-called SARS rogue unit? That's the second question. The third question is, uh, and I'm delighted to hear that this, is that you've decided that it's in the public interest to fast track this investigation and presumably complete the investigation inside the 18 month uh, period. How long do you expect this investigation uh, to take? That's uh, the third question. The fourth question is, assuming that Erber were to make a, a, uh, a negative finding, what is the maximum sanction that Erber can recommend? The last question is, I mean, it's very clear from your presentation uh, that these investigations are complex uh, and they are for that reason likely to take fairly extended periods of time and consume significant resources. Do you have all the resources at your disposal necessary to complete uh, this investigation and indeed other public interest investigations? And if you do not have the resources, what resources do you require? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm absolutely delighted that the slides have been put um, six on a page rather than one on a page. So whoever was responsible for that, I think, is, is, is it needs congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you to, to, to Erba for, for your presentation and, and so encouraging to see the, the work and progress that's been, that is taking place. Um, I, I just want to ask about uh, the the investigations into SAA, whether you've um, able to give us any feedback on on those. Um, um, yeah, again, one understands that the detail can't be given to us, but um, some some comfort about those investigations. Thank you. No, thank 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 very much, Chairperson. You know when we. Uh I think in 2014 and 2015, when we uh, made substantial submissions around financial crimes in South Africa, more so around the illicit financial flows, we pointed to the fact that most of these uh, so-called auditing firms are collaborators in the huge financial crimes that occur in South Africa. They actually legitimate them in many instances. And we actually made a, a call, actually as part of our submission, to 
to the committees that made submissions to, to the Davis Tax Committee, to every platform, which say that part of the things that we need to do is to look broadly into the conduct of uh, these auditing firms that uh, legitimate crimes. We have written to IRBA on many occasions. Now, recently, even around the Transnet issue to say, let's look at the auditors there on legitimating the huge crimes that have occurred there. And uh, I'm, I'm interested in knowing as to what are the instances upon which uh, everybody has ever acted on any of these professional bodies for for misconduct like can we give an example if you have ever acted on any of these professional bodies because if you have never done that anyway i think that you are part of the lawlessness like you're part of the fact that there is no law in that era the auditors can do as they wish and they legitimate the wrongful doings and uh, and crime, like huge financial crimes that okay. Who have you ever acted on? What have you done? Have you ever withdrawn the accreditation of uh, any of these professional bodies? Because the Auditing Professions Act, I think in 35C, says that the regulatory body pending the outcome of a process referred to in the process above, may suspend the accreditation of a professional body if it, if it considers it is in the best interest of the public or the auditing profession. I think that is beyond doubt now that the misconduct of KPMG requires the application of Section 35C that uh, you should terminate the accreditation of KPMG because it's in the interest of the public. Like the, there is a necessary and solid outcry on the misconduct uh, uh, of these accomplices of criminal activities uh, uh, by KPMG, and 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 of course that there will be a lot of issues that will be raised, which are, are always raised to delay enforcement of laws that no is still under investigations but i think that is prima facie and adequate evidence that erba must uh, put into effect uh, uh, section 35c of the auditing professions act so that we protect the auditing profession that is your obligation in terms of the legislation but also to protect the integrity of our country that it, it cannot be that the lawlessness that applies to the National Prosecutions Authority, the lawlessness that applies to the political uh, party that is ruling uh, the country today must now extend to every sector of society. It cannot be. Someone has to take action in terms of some of these uh, developments that are, are prevailing. So, I, I, so, so let, let's, 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 let's deal with that. Can you give us examples of the instances that you have acted before and uh, whether we should not look into a stricter application of Section 35C of the APA uh, in, in this instance. Because if we tiptoe around KPMG, then we must know that it's the end of it. It's, it's the complete end of it that the institutions that are supposed to uh, verify integrity of companies and government and all entities are the ones that are all complaints of crime. We, we cannot allow that to be the case because we might as well dissolve uh, this country and, and live as an, or dissolve government and everything as and live as and when we wish and without not doing anything. If, if, if uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's one of the things that we have to do. There will be other points up to now, so, I mean, really. So, so those yeah. are some of the things that we have to look at. Thank right. you, Chairperson. It's a, it's, a, it's a cogent submission. Uh, that's what you say. It's not for you to decide whether it's cogent. I'm saying I'm brilliant, you know? Uh, who cares? I mean, when I'm five years old, my son might say that, but when he's 15 and he says it, I say, hey, boy, it's not for you to say it. Right, okay, Mr. Lees. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, the, it goes without saying that I am brilliant, but um, we won't put that to the vote here today, as I, I might just find myself rather disappointed. <laughs> 
Mr. Chairman, I, I just, um, I, you know, I asked questions, and perhaps I, I, it, it, the Uber um, weren't aren't fully briefed about what, what exactly. But I, I'm really concerned about um, the the audit uh, last year's annual report um, to, of SAA, where uh, the auditors accepted that they were going concern when. Quite clearly, they weren't, and so I had asked Erba to 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 investigate whether, in fact, there was any delinquency on the part of the auditors, PD, PwC, and others, um, in accepting the going concern assumption, because it seemed clear to 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 me and to many others that it, SAA, even at that point in September last year, August last year, was was not a going concern, um, and quite. Clearly, the history has proven that to be the case, but obviously one can't look at history to assess whether the assumption was correct or not. So, um, And there might be a, another uh, issue with the auditors of SA as well that, that wasn't um, um, raised by me. Anybody else wants to ask? Uh, welcome, <coughs> Charles de Beer, <coughs> our <coughs> wonderful chairperson from the <clears throat> NCOP side. I know Floyd won't agree, but nevertheless, <clears throat> <clears throat> I think that about you. <clears throat> so what is the <clears throat> basis of the uh, NCOP participating? I don't want to disagree. I want to be told what is the basis of the NCOP participating in this process? No, no. The way it works, Floyd, you know, you're the rules committee guy. Uh, he comes to observe, and obviously the norm has been, whatever the rule is, if there are people, at least in this committee, right, we cool about it. We allow everybody to speak, right? Never mind that people attack us for being autocratic and neo-Stalinist. They don't use that word. But this is the only committee I know anywhere in the world where up till the day before you vote on a bill, you have a right of say. Now, there are people in the ANC who don't approve of it. Well, tough, because the majority in the study groups agreed to that. Similarly, I mean, Floyd, if the NCOP is here, it's good. He's taking his time. He's got his own responsible. There are five committees clustered in one. Floyd, don't make it life difficult. If he wants to speak, it's fine. No one stopped him until now, not even you, by the way. But he's here more to observe. It's not the NCOP committee. He's coming because he's interested in the issue. Now, <clears throat> can I raise a few quick things? One is, <clears throat> firstly, um, Bernard, you want to introduce your team to us, right? Uh, uh, I must inform the committee that it was only yesterday morning that I spoke to Bernard and said we would prefer a board member to be here. And he said it's pretty tough at this late hour to bring a board member. But I think it will be more consistent with our approach. And uh, I said to him, I'll take responsibility. Can I also raise something I want to raise when we look at the program about the role of a committee chair during constituency stroke party political time? And I'm raising this with the authorities in parliament about how much of time are we supposed to spend as chairs sitting here doing parliamentary work? For example, yesterday I left parliament at quarter past eight in the evening when it's a constituency day. All of it spent except for the first hour with the ICT guy on work of this committee. I think this committee is split into two. That's my view. It should be have a legislative arm and an oversight arm. But let, that's the later when you look at the program tomorrow. <clears throat> yeah. OK, I can imagine what will happen. But in any case, uh, can we look at the issues? The first is, the first is, uh, <clears throat> um, is it possible that when you finish this process, right, you might want to propose amendments to the law, right? Is that a possibility? Secondly, I do want to agree with Floyd. <clears throat> of course, Floyd, you know, is trying to make a point, me, me, me sort of thing. We did this. He's right. He raised it first. But it is correct what he says, that he had raised it very much at the outset that, look, these four companies, the big four, are complicit in this. All right, fine. Well, you are, by the way, have no speaking rights. Uh, Peace was here six minutes late. You are here uh, 35 minutes late. So, <clears throat> by the way, members need to know we're sitting here till 5.30 p.m. with a half an hour break. And then comrades from the study group need to know we're here till 7.30 p.m. Right. Having said that, can we just raise a few quick things? One is the legislative amendment. Secondly, uh, I, I think, you know, Floyd, to be fair to you, it's on our agenda. But we've been focusing primarily on what action are the police going to take? That was a shift from all the committee chairs. We said, look, we can discuss till the cows come home, as it were. If the police and the NPA are not acting against these people, 
It's really just an abstract. But what I think, Floyd, we should do, now can you please note this, Teboho? We should, the next time we sit on illicit financial flows, I think we should invite the companies. I think he's right. We did agree on it, but it's just not been able to slide in. So, you know, I, I want to agree with everything he says apart from the last third, right? The surrealistic stuff, the Bakunin type anarchism, you know, uh, that's what we're going to evolve into. Or on the other end, Somalia. I don't know which he was referring to. But anyway, I don't agree with that. But for the rest, he was absolutely right in everything he said. About you, IRBA, I think he's being very tough, but he's got the right to say it. And you are under scrutiny now. And he's right. What have you done until now? But I don't agree with the tone and timbre of his language, nor the severe severity of what he says. But I think he's right to ask the question that, <clears throat> you know, if all these things are happening, not least illicit financial flows, and we are one of the top ten countries, and then we must thank the EFF. They put this issue vigorously on the agenda, actually. Even if I was debating with Floyd on the eve of 2019, we're desperately trying to get every quarter percent of a vote, I'll admit to that, because it's a fact. You raised it first. <clears throat> now, on the issue of, 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 of your investigations, right, um, have you been under any pressure by anybody either to do these investigations beyond what any individual can do, which is required, or, or to stop them? And if so, well, we want to know what the board is doing about it and the minister, and do you want parliament to do anything about it if it's necessary? Then on the Saika thing, now here, colleagues and comrades, it's just my personal view, Tandi. I don't know, right? So I'm throwing it out. Now, while cooking on two consecutive evenings, I had the TV on. So, you know, between banging the pots and all that, I cook all the time, as you well know. So, you know, uh, I didn't quite hear what was going on. On the one day, I, I got the sense that Bernard was extremely irate at Saika, right? That they're having this investigation. I had the tone more than the content, right? So I must accept that maybe I got it wrong. But I had visitors, and they were my priority. I'm human too, you know, unlike some, what some people think here. Yeah, I'm supposed to be on call 25 hours a day, eight days a week. But that's fine. Now then, the next day, I see something or hear something. Again, I'm cooking, and it's old Nombembe, one of my heroes, right, saying, well, you know, this is what we're doing. So the question I want to put to you, you know, my own view, Tandi, is the more investigations, the merrier, except they should not undermine each other. So the first thing, my view, Frank might help, is you are the legally mandated body to investigate, and you should do that. Now, Saika is also a professional body of auditors, right? So is there no way, the, you said you met, is there no way both of you can meet, and they acknowledge that you are the primary organization, and the outcomes that you come to are some things that parliament and the minister and the executive have to apply their mind to primarily. So that they do their work, you just define your, your respective areas of work, it's complementary, and then what they do is, I don't know if you can do this, Frank, this is an idea, that what happens then is you finish your report, right? So when they, you finish your report, when they do their report, they also take into account of what you said. So you don't end up with a situation where you find KPMG guilty, say, of all the crimes they're accused of, and then those guys clear them. Then you're going to get confusion in the public mind. Then I see KPMG is doing an inquiry. The police, presumably, they tell us, are doing some inquiry, the hawks and so on. Now, those are not things we can manage here. Our chairperson, I must remind him, has to follow up on all those <coughs> issues, Bjorkman. So what I'm saying is, in respect of Saika and yourselves, can't you strike a deal? Can't you do it in a way that they can come to their own independent opinions, but they must take into account what you've done, and so on and so on, that sort of thing. So I don't think we should oppose Saika. We should say, fine, but strike a deal. If you feel the need, if you feel the need, and hopefully you don't need that because we don't want to interfere, maybe we can have a small committee here that assists multi-party, right? That says, guys, do your respective stuff, and this is it. Now, over to you, Tandi. <coughs> I need to apologize. Really, I wanted to be early on this one, and you'll know because why I would have wanted to. Because I felt vindicated in a way uh, on what I said earlier on about uh, why there was a need of uh, mandatory uh, rotation. Because I raised an issue and, and Saika did not take it into consideration. And now today I feel vindicated by that. But I don't want to go into town about that. The most important uh, approach that will be the 
uh, the best approach uh, for for us to come to the bottom of this matter and let's 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 not even look at kpmg as an institution and look at the principle of defaulting by audit firms because to me it's more about the principle than who defaulted we should use uh, kpmg's uh, behavior as a as an example to have ways and means to ensure that there's no loopholes in the system now irba it's our legal authority in this context and it's it, it there mustn't be an element of diminishing returns in terms of it's taking its rightful posture to do thorough investigations we will welcome any other contribution made by firms, but firms themselves and organizations will be conflicted because it's their membership, right? So he has an independent body that carries the responsibility. So much as we want to welcome Saika's role, the box stops with Irba. So we, we might want to look at all reports, it's not a problem, and we are not preemptive of the outcomes because we need to allow process of, of investigations to be thorough. Because I don't want us to be emotive about it and, 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 and play to the gallery and just because it's a matter that is there in the public discourse and we start to take a posture before we even look at the merits and the demerits of the case itself. But to us, it's another litmus test and a lesson uh, given the defaulting of the banks and now the defaulting of, of presumably I need to be very careful of the language I use. At least I've been, I'm misconstrued to mean that I'm conclusive in the approach. But I want us to strengthen the role of IRVA in this case, that any other investigation must be a feeder into the work of IRVA. So it shouldn't just be a standalone, because one can ask us which report will, will the committee consider. So ours is IRVA. So, but doesn't therefore suggest that we will not take into account. So I want us to be clear on, on that specific one, but also to, to, not, to, to, not to diminish the message that I, we did say it up front, that there's a human element in the operations of any institutions, and, and it was ignored. Uh, and when, when African bank fails, it was, it, failed, it was a human element. So nobody who's human, uh, cannot do that. But also, it says who, who police the police men in this case. And that's where everything lies. Who police the police men? IRBA is the rightful organization to do that. It will give us scientific proof because they carry the necessary expertise to do that type of work on our behalf. And then we'll take it from there. But the sooner we come to the end of it, the better, because it's a matter of national interest as we speak. So it means we will have to speed up the process of investigation so that it's, it's not a delayed process. Uh, because the, there, are, there are other parties who are affected who will want to look at KPMG and others with, with a particular eye. So if we move with speed and we bring the matter to closure, then it will be easy. Um, on a lighter note, uh, it was the ANC who took up this thing. It was not the DA, it was not everybody else. Thank you very much, Chair. Everybody will claim it doesn't really matter, man. We're here as a committee. Now, uh, all right, now uh, it's time for you to reply. Is that right? Okay. JSC here, and we're running right through till 13.30, so we'd like to tie up, because this is part of an ongoing engagement. Yes. Thank you very much, Chair. So, um, again, apologies from the board members. I did um, give uh, the chairman feedback last night saying that uh, we tried to call all the board members yesterday but um, they, they couldn't make it otherwise the chairman of the board and the board members would have accompan accompanied me. On my right I've got uh, Herman Tlaku. He is uh, the technical manager in, in the CEO's office at the RBA so he does all my research and um, he supports me with um, technical matters and, 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 and uh, um, just in general, even on my international committees. And on my left, I have Lorraine van Skalkweg, who is responsible for the strategic uh, projects in our office. And you would have seen her here with mandatory audit firm rotation and uh, um, with, with KPMG, you'll also hear more about her. 
So, Chair, if I can, um, in the next 10 minutes, try to respond to all the, the, the questions. Honorable Maynir has asked, uh, firstly, about cooperation from KPMG. And I did mention that we, after our discussion and our meetings with KPMG, we had to remind them of the cooperation because in the beginning, um, we did not always uh, receive the information that we required. Uh, it was it was important that uh, we d the process isn't delayed or that we are fed the information in in bits and pieces. It for our investigation, it's important that we receive everything on time because it impacts directly on our investigation. After we have met with the, the leadership, the local leadership and the international leadership, they have given us the commitment that they will cooperate, that they will supply us with all the information. And since then, they have been giving us uh, the necessary information, bar one or two documents uh, that we might require from them, uh, of which, again, we follow up immediately because we don't want them to think that there's an opportunity to not give us information or to delay giving us information. With regards to the scope of the investigation, uh, clearly in, on, in our statement on 30 June, we did say that we are investigating Linkway Trading, the auditors of Linkway Trading, and we are, are investigating the auditors that attended the Gupta wedding. However, we do have the right, if we come across information that might indicate that we need to indicate more auditors at KPMG or more audits or companies that might come to light during our investigation, we can extend our investigation to other persons. Uh, going beyond the persons that have already been mentioned in the press, uh, we, could in, we could extend our investigation. In respect of the SARS rogue unit report, that was one of the examples where the first step that we had to do was to uh, find out who actually issued and who signed off on that report. It was a forensic report, and at the time... We're going to come out as live visuals where the IRB, that's the Independent Regulatory Board for Auditors, is appearing in Parliament before the Standing Committee on Finance regarding the KPMG matter and Deloitte matter, amongst other issues on the agenda.